Hey guys, Daniel here. Welcome back to Stuff and Things. Um, continuing on with this different kind of format here, seeing how it's working out, and uh, you know, still present you guys news and such, but in a little bit more intimate setting. Mm, yeah, we're gonna put some Barry Manilow on. We're gonna we're gonna get right down to it. Mm. For all of our male viewers out there, I do apologize. Unless you're, you know, of the other persuasion, then you're welcome. Just wanted to share a couple of interesting things with you. Um, want to start off actually with a bit of a terrifying news. Everyone naturally is afraid of spiders. There's actually a lot of theories as to why we're even afraid of spiders. Possibly because they represent like an unknown. Like we're always afraid of the unknown, right? I mean, we're, we're all kind of like a scarified of... Scarified? We're scarified. We're all scarified. I'm going with it. Like anglerfish, you know, they're terrifying because they're so different, they're so other than us, and spiders kind of represent that, so, a bit of a tangent there, but basically that's the leading theory why we're afraid of spiders, and they can kill us. Fortunately, spiders tend to kind of go after everything, including bats, I did not re even realize this was a thing, but apparently on every single continent where there are bats and spiders, bat, uh, spiders kill bats, which is just not cool. I mean, bats are awesome, they're like us, but smaller, and winged, and really good hearing and stuff, and they just kill everything, it's kind of awesome. There's so many different kinds of them, thousands of varieties. In fact, I was, I was looking at a video of this, of, of these uh, African um, fox bats, which are so cool. They have cool faces, they're little foxy faces, and they just eat fruit and they're awesome. They don't even, they fight, but they don't even like draw blood. They just like, get off my branch. Anyways, it's, it's kind of crazy. These um, spiders, uh, you know, tarantula type ones, would form these massive webs. In fact, females will actually work together in groups to make even massive webs. They'll be like meters across to trap these bats in, and then you know, do their dirty business. Uh, spiders, who, why, who is safe from spiders? No one. Apparently bats, we thought, you know, they would fly around, you know, killing insects. You'd think they would be the one thing that spiders can't kill. But no, spiders just got big dicks and just kill everything. Ugh. I know they do good work and they kill a bunch of insects we don't like, but stupid spiders, stick to the ground-based rodents. Don't kill the poor blind ones. They're cool. Okay. Moving on from stupid spiders, uh, earlier in the month, um, there was actually a man who had 75% of his skull replaced with a polymer 3D printed skull. And this, this man, um, due to his brain swelling, they had to remove a ton of his skull, and so they actually print, 3D printed this um, out of this material they called PEC. Uh, it is like titanium in that it's uh, non-reactive. But it has all the bumps and stuff that our own skulls have, because like our bones are just like, straight up like a piece of metal, right? They actually have all these little indentations that then the uh, fibers and everything can connect to. Because I mean, if you had a flat surface, nothing could grip that flat surface. Get up the little bumps and the little ridges and all the little nooks and crannies that we can't really see. But you know, these micro little tissues and blood vessels, everything that can actually connect to them. So they actually use CT scans to figure out exactly what they part of the skull they needed to do. And then they just 3D printed it and replaced this guy's head with mostly a big hunk of plastic. I mean, the, before the invention of these 3D printing, this guy would have been dead. That's what's so amazing about what we're doing nowadays. We're, we're saving lives that would have been completely, you know, lost to us before. I mean, think about this. You can 3D print a skull to like, exact details and, well, good enoughness that this guy will be able to continue living. I mean, who knows what we could do? If someone gets injured in a chainsaw accident or something along those lines where there's a lot of damage, so much damage, so much is uh, the material is just destroyed, shredded. Well, you know, you got that part of bone that is missing. Well, I mean, they could make a polymer that would then fit in there and done. I mean, you could do it or you could maybe just make something, maybe some sort of casting kind of thing that would allow the bone to regrow, something like that, that'd be pretty awesome. And what's really amazing about this, like I said, is that they were able to make it with all those little grooves and indentations, which allows it to fully function. And apparently that was a big stumbling block with it, is that it would, this skull not only would have to be like, you know, like regular bone, you, the skull is very important that have these little pots, these little ridges and pocks and everything in it that allows it to actually function correctly. So, pretty awesome. and. Amazing this person actually continued to live. And to finish things off, uh, talk a little bit about alcohol and our consumption of it and why it might actually be really hard for some people to quit. According to this new study, they found that people who drink, well they say apparently a heavy drinker, even though it says 8 drinks per week, 
which seems kind of normal to me. Oh, well, like, you know, last one day, well, if you did that plus an extra on the weekend, you fulfill that eight drinks, so I don't see that as really heavy drinking. Basically, they found that people who had this eight drinks per week versus people who like had lighter drinking, whatever that is, they had higher, higher levels of acetate, which is basically just an energy rich byproduct of alcohol, you know, metabolizing our system. With this acetate in, our, in their blood, it allowed them to get more energy for their brain, therefore powering things. And apparently this is a possibility of why it is hard for people to just go cold turkey from alcohol because they would be used to having, you know, they start drinking some, the acetate levels would rise in their system and their brain would start going off and then they would lose it. And this, this ties into a couple of other theories that people have with people with alcoholism, why it is hard to get off of it. I mean, this makes perfect sense. Your brain is working a little bit better. If you guys remember the movie Beer Fest, the guy talks about uh, using beer to uh, teach people things and then when they got drunk again, they remember it. That's actually proven to be true. And there's actually a theory that this is a major reason for alcoholism because when you get drunk, you achieve this different state of mind and you're able to remember things and you come up with these really unique ideas then when you're sober, you have no access to it. So the only way to get it back is to drink some more. This then leads to a possible treatment for alcoholism. I love it when we actually find these root causes, like we find these little parts, right? We got this, we got this puzzle, and we find these little, little pieces, and the pieces just keep building this more, this bigger picture, where you think even just, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, you're like, you know, it'd be a good idea if we had surgeons who would train, would clean wounds instead of just praying about the wounds. You know, we went from like that 200 years ago to this, where we're like, this particular chemical makeup in their blood might be making them use more energy in their brain, therefore making them even more dependent on alcohol. Maybe this is linked to the dependence. Breaking apart everything, we're figuring out why everything is the way it is, and, you know, making the world a better place. Very encouraging. I'm happy. No more depressing things, except for those stupid spiders. I hate them. Let me know in the comments down below if you hate spiders. I mean, you're gonna anyways. I know it. All, they're all evil. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree with my opinion. If you don't, I don't want to talk to you. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.